pianist in the world. Is all that stands between us and total destruction. Thank you very much. Welcome to the show. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is David Letterman. I'm the host of the program. You're in a good mood. I'm in a good mood. We have a wonderful, wonderful show for you tonight. I just wanted to get that out of the way in case it all collapses and turns to hell later. You'll... Uh, well, now, this was exciting. Ronald Reagan yesterday was in uh, Alabama, Tuscaloosa. Anybody here from Tuscaloosa? Oh, now I can't do the joke. <laughs> he was in Tuscaloosa, Alabama, and on his way to the airport, he and the, uh, the, the party, the presidential party, stopped at a McDonald's. Now, this is apparently all true. He went inside and he ordered a, uh, a Big Mac fries and an iced tea. Uh, <laughs> wanted to get in good with the kids at the place, you know. So uh, uh, then he spends like 45 minutes talking to a guy dressed up like the clown, Ronald McDonald, you know, and, and his, uh, his aides and the, the bodyguards and everybody growing quite impatient. And they say, you know, uh, truthfully, uh, Mr. President, you should be on your way home so you can prepare for the debate with uh, Walter Mondale. And he says, I was. So, <laughs> oh, now, now, there's no need to be hissing. Who, who's ever hissing, please don't break my heart. My friend Louise is here tonight. Don't do this to me. Louise is from is South Carolina? Greenville. Greenville, South Carolina. You're in town for how long you to meet Louise? A couple of weeks? Just till tomorrow. <laughs> Two days? And, and Louise is coming out to the house tonight. Yeah. Uh, we, got a, we got a great show for you tonight. Can you feel it? Do you feel like something extra good might happen tonight? Boy, I can, I can feel it. Uh, Bill Murray is here tonight, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Also, uh, a terrific actor, Harry Dean Stanton, is here tonight. He's, uh... And we're going we're gonna to take a look at some people who will not be on the show and uh, other wonderful surprises. Now, here is uh, our good friend, Mr. Paul Schaefer. Hi. Uh... Yeah, thank you so much. David, the band, uh, the band is all very impressed with your jacket. Thank evening. you very much. It's a different style for you. You're sort of... Uh... You're reaching out with the younger generation, I think. Yeah, that's that's Today. what I'm doing. I'm reaching out with the younger generation. No, it looks it's it's very nice. Huh? Very nice. Do you want you you don't really like wear a lot of sport coats? I don't do wear jackets. To tell yeah. you the truth, it's not it's not the greatest for playing. Gets in the way of your uh, keyboards. Yeah. yeah, it's not so fun. Yeah, so much. David, the band uh, the band is all very impressed with your jacket. Thank evening. you very much. It's a different style for you. You're sort of. Uh, you're reaching out with the younger generation, I think. Yeah, that's that's Today. what I'm doing. I'm reaching out with the younger generation. No, it looks it's it's very nice. Huh? Very nice. Do you want you you don't you really like wear a lot of sport coats? I don't do you? wear jackets. To tell yeah. you the truth, it's not it's not the greatest for playing. Gets in the way of your uh, keyboards. Yeah. yeah, it's not so fun. But uh, what's happening? Oh, here we go. <laughs> I tell you, when this gets applause, you know this country is starved for entertainment. <laughs> this is our Phil Donahue countdown calendar. Someone's marked it up. <laughs> Look at that. And um, Phil Donahue is moving his show from uh, Chicago to New York City, and he'll be doing it right here in this very building, and we're counting off the days, and each one of these dates has a little fun fact. 
Bill, pick somebody out of the audience to answer a fun fact here about Phil Dunning. All right, Lucy, or Louise. <laughs> Louise, do you mind standing up? Do you know who Phil Donahue is, Louise? Yeah, have, have, you ever, have you ever seen Phil's program? A couple times. A couple of times, all right. Well, you're just the person we're looking for then. When Phil lived in Centerville, Ohio, who lived right across the street? <laughs> Okay, that's it's a, no, it's that's right. That was the answer to last night. Irma Bombeck lived right across the street. I'm sorry, Louise, but we have some lovely parting gifts for you. Oh, look, there's uh, Phil's eye. So Phil will be coming into town uh, before you know it. Okay. Now, uh, Paul, you would think that between you and me, we would know most of what there is to know about popular contemporary television entertainment show business. You and I. Pretty much. Together. Yeah. Our collective intellect and knowledge. We, we would have it covered. Sure. We would I would say so, yes. At least heard of what makes up the mainstream of popular entertainment. I've heard of a lot of the performers. Yeah. I try to keep up. Yeah, I mean, well, I know uh, a couple of months well. ago, I was uh, sitting at home watching my uh, expensive and elaborate cable TV system. <laughs> And uh, I was watching, I think, uh, one Saturday afternoon, a show called Fishing with Orlando. And um, there was a commercial on uh, for a piano player. Uh, I tell you what, let's take a look at the piano player's commercial right now before we go on. This famous star is considered the most popular pianist in the world. He's already sold 27 million records and won 121 gold records. Richard Claterman's romantic music is loved in 38 countries. Okay, Richard Claterman, ladies and gentlemen. Now... Now, Paul, had you ever heard of Richard Claterman before we started talking about him on the show? Uh, I must confess to, uh, well, I had seen the TV ad. You'd but, seen the TV but ad. before that, no. I had never I'd heard never of it. Uh, we have some facts here about Richard Claterman. Richard Claterman sells one album every 12 seconds. Holy cow. Uh, Whoa. Uh, Richard Claterman once worked as a bank clerk, not unlike T.S. Eliot. <laughs> In the six years since he has been recording professionally, listen to this, Richard Claterman has sold over 35 million records worldwide. Uh, in France, Richard Claterman sold 2,800,000 albums in one afternoon. No, no, in one year, in one year. Uh, this is an unequaled record. In Norway, in Norway, Richard Claterman's sales are so great it is claimed that you will find a Claterman album in half of the country's households. Hmm. Well, I had never heard of Richard Claterman, and uh, apparently many of you here are perhaps not uh, intimately familiar with the artist, but this one statistic sort of caught our eye, the fact that in Norway, you will find a Claterman album in half the country's households. So what we thought we would do tonight is get a, a person out here to interpret for us and then phone Norway to see if we can't locate one of these albums. <laughs> Now, ladies and gentlemen, to translate for us, the Assistant General Manager of the Norwegian American Chamber of Commerce, Inger Talixson. Inger? How are you? Thank you. Thank you. Inger, are you, are you originally from Norway? Yes. You are from Norway. Had you heard of Richard Claterman? No. You had not heard of Richard Claterman? <laughs> Uh, you work here in the United States? I've been here quite a while. Okay, how long have you been here? Fifteen years. Fifteen years. Now, you have the name of a resident of, I believe, Oslo, Norway, and their phone number, don't yes, you? Yes, we Okay. Do. Now, we're going to be calling now, help me with the pronunciation, Lilliba yes. Mogard. 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 Mogard, yes. Lilliba Mogard. Now, uh, how did we find this name and phone number? Well, she is the mother of one of the secretaries at the Norwegian Trade Commission. Okay, but she, she is a resident of Oslo. Oh, yes. She doesn't know that we're going to call and ask about Richard Claterman. No. She knows nothing about any of this except that uh, we're going to call we're her. We're going to call her. Okay, this is not a shill. You don't work with her. You don't travel around the country reading minds or any of that. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> okay, and, and you're going to do all of the interpretation for us, yes. right? Yes. Uh, uh, Norwegian is a very... A different language, isn't it? Well, uh, Spanish is a different language. What am I saying? It's a Germanic language. It is a Germanic language. Okay, all right. Let me let me dial, and then you'll do the talking, and we'll just see if this woman... No, 
knows Richard Clayderman, who, by the way, is on the show tonight, <laughs> or, or maybe not. No. <laughs> All right, this is a very long number. You can direct dial to Norway, correct? Yes. Thank you. <laughs> okay, I only hope we've got all the numbers. Now, you do the talking. We're going to speak to Lilliba. I'm going to speak in Norwegian. Speaking? Oh, yeah, well, originally. What? I mean... Do what? I, I will speak to her in Norwegian. Good idea. Yes. <laughs> she may know something. <laughs> See, yeah, if, it, but... if it was English, there's no point in you being here. Because no, I, but... I can handle the English. Okay. Hello? The, hello? Oh, we have somebody there. Hello, Ed Lilba? Yeah? Yeah, hello. No ring me for the David Letterman show. Yeah, uh, hello, Are they, are they are clear? Yeah, yeah, we are clear. Yeah, they what are ready to answer Oh, they're ready questions. to answer well, oh, Ask yeah. what time it is in Norway. Uh, what time is it now in Norway? Uh, it's uh, 10 45 10 45. Is she getting ready to go to bed? Uh, ska du, jag ska inte lägga det det? Oh, oh, nej, da, de bor i de så de bil hjem, da, da. Uh, She has a lot of girlfriends visiting tonight. For a <laughs> <laughs> Okay, well, uh, Lilba, uh, you can have a little girl friend here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Five and a hostess. Five and a hostess. Are yes. they drinking? Drink or Yeah, it's a little bit We are in the same room, so I can try to say what you say. Yeah, yeah. A little bit. 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 Uh, ask her if she has a favorite clarinetist. No, don't ask her that. We get her in a big hurry here. Um, ask her if she, uh, just ask her if she knows who Richard Claderman is. Yeah, and she knows that Richard Claderman? No, that's <laughs> Richard. What did she say? No, no, that's Richard. Oh, she doesn't. Tell her to ask the group. Richard Claderman. Ask around. Have her ask around. Richard Claderman? Yeah, yeah, yeah. See you that. Jo, de känner han. De, de, du know him, oh, I guess they, my English. She doesn't know him. Du vet, känner han inte? Du? Jo, de andra känner den, ja. Ja, och de others, but not her. Oh. <laughs> well, then it's unlikely that she would have an album. Find out if one of those ah, women has an album. Är det någon av er som har en plata med han? Ja, det är... Och... Dagrun säger att hon har en plata med han. Ja, Dagrun. They do have one of the yes, albums. Yes, one of the ladies. Well, that's very impressive. Has, has so that's like album. one out of four, at least we've been... Uh, that's mm -hmm. not too bad. All right, and just finally, uh, thank her and ask her if this has been the biggest thrill of her life. First of all, thank you for Mr. Lederman. And is this one of their biggest eyes in life? What did you say? Is this one of their biggest eyes in life? Yes. Is it that? What did you say? Yes, it is. Stort, vi er veldig spent, og vi synes det var veldig spennende her, så det er et stort øyeblikk for oss, ja. It's among one of the greatest. Among one of the greatest. Well, we'll certainly accept that. Thank you very much. Inga, thank you very much. You're a delightful woman. I appreciate you helping out here. We have to, what do we have to do? Oh, we have to do a commercial, and then we'll meet Bill Murray. So come on back, folks. This famous star is considered the most popular pianist in the world. He's already sold 27 million records and won 121 gold records. Richard Claderman's romantic music is loved in 38 countries. Mmm, that looks good. It's real butter sprout for the Green Giant's butter sauce. Tasting fresh and buttery. Tasting good as good can be. Butter up their appetite. That Green Giant goodness really shows tonight. 
A butter sauce made with real butter is why Green Giant vegetables make every meal special. It makes his vegetables taste better. You mean taste butter. <laughs> that Green Giant goodness really shows. There's nothing like my slice and bake chocolate chip cookies and kids. Oh, that pop and fresh dough. Cookie. Bake it up hot. Mm. Bake it up so. Pillsbury slice and bake chocolate chip cookies. Mm. Mm. Ah, oh, pop and fresh <laughs> My cousin Barbara suffered a brutal death, and I watched as her killer went free on a technicality. That's why I worked so hard to protect victims, and I've worked equally hard to protect consumers from unfair business practices. I work to be an attorney general for all the people. And now, I need your help. I need your vote. Vote for Attorney General Ken Eikenberry and help him put criminals in their place. Hi, I'm Phil. And I'm Steve. This is Amy. She's looking for a donor for a kidney transplant, and we'd appreciate it if we could find one. But organs aren't all we need. Your generous donations will help all patients throughout the Central Washington State area. All these funds will stay in the Central Washington area to help these patients. So please send your money to the Central Washington Kidney Foundation. Thank, Thank you. you. Ladies and gentlemen, and uh, Richard Claterman is actually here and will be playing with Paul and our wonderful group of folks over there. Yeah, all right. Well. It is always a pleasure to welcome my first guest to this program. He is the world's most popular comic actor. Yes, yes and, he is. And is making his dramatic debut in a new film which opens on October 19th called The Razor's Edge. Please welcome Bill Murray. you feel good? Yeah. Yeah. They so love you. you like Louise, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Not a bad deal. You owe me. <laughs> uh, I saw I saw the movie this morning, Razor's Edge. It, it, it's a it's a sprawling, huge, bigger than life epic, and you're terrific in the film, and it looks great. It's just. Uh, did you go to all of those places? Were you actually in up in the mountain areas? Was that India? Uh, no. Uh, Bill Bixby went over for me. <laughs> no, yeah, that was me. That was me. Oh, that yeah. was me. We were in some great spots over there, and I was the only one that didn't get sick. Oh, well, so. that's that's great. How long did it take to make that film? <laughs> Years, I guess. It, uh, it we, we shot for three months. We yeah. shot in uh, England, uh, Paris, and India. Yeah, it looks great. Uh, I hope it does very well for you. Uh, now, I understand you had difficulty getting here, Bill. Is this true? Or oh, is this I had a... some trouble getting here today. Well, actually, it was yesterday, but uh, I was in uh, California, and uh, I was with the director of the film, John Byram, and we were coming back to New York, and we got on the plane. It was a 747, just to set the stage for everything. It's a nice plane. I got on. My seat was in the front row, and John was behind me. I looked to my right, and there was Charlie Hayde from the Hill Street Blues show. Mm -hmm. I looked behind him and I saw Loretta Swit from MASH. Behind Loretta, Roger Smith and Ann Margaret. Oh. Behind, yeah, Ann Margaret and Roger Smith. <laughs> and behind those two, that couple, Leonard Nimoy. Good heavens! And it hit me and John said to me, Bill. And I said, yeah, I know. And he said, yeah, airport 1985. <laughs> We hit some turbulence, and I rang the stewardess bell, and I said, is there a girl on a kidney dialysis machine in the bell? 
I said, no way, we're going down, you know? Yeah. So I started writing letters to everyone I knew, and I asked the pilot if I could put them in the blue box or whatever the hell kind of thing. Do you mind uh, flying? That's not as much fun as it used to be. Yeah. I mean, it used to be a big deal to get drunk at high altitude, you know? And <laughs> once you get drunk in the Himalayas, you know, it's on the point. Pales by comparison. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. you still have to walk up yeah. there. And, uh, All right, now let's get right to it. How about those cubs? What the heck there, huh? There it is. There yeah. it is. Cub Blue. Did you get to go to any of the uh, playoff games or the series games? Yeah, I went to the uh, two games in Chicago, and I figured, <laughs> well, we pretty much got it wrapped yeah. up. Yeah. And um, I, after they lost the game in San Diego, the two games in San Diego, I thought, well, I'll go to San Diego. And I thought, no, you're just afraid. So. Mm -hmm. But uh, I, I, I don't think the Chicago fans would have turned over a police car and set fire to it. <laughs> I think they would have taken it for a ride, though. <laughs> you know, what, uh, what goes haywire there? What, uh, how does that uh, good, clean uh, fun turn into hooliganism? Well, I got to blame uh, the Bushes, <laughs> frankly. George and Barbara Bush. Uh -huh. <laughs> because, I mean, it's one thing to win a world championship in a town in, in the Motor City, and, you know, you've been wanting that world championship, and... You've had a great team that's led all the way, but when you get those two together with like 50,000 people who are already up, <laughs> the sky's the limit. <laughs> you know, I mean, they really have to be careful about where they go like nowadays throwing, because the excitement. Gas on a fire. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I mean, if they had been on that plane the other day, mm -hmm. forget about yeah. it, man. It would have been nuts. <laughs> so they just got to be really careful, especially Barbara, because she's nuts. She, yeah. she parties pretty hard. <laughs> she goes crazy. And I'm so excited about four more years of those two together, just to see what, see what they're going to do. It's really like, you know, when the Flintstones had a baby, it's mm -hmm. that kind of excitement. <laughs> All right, we're going to do a uh, commercial. We'll be back uh, more with Bill Murray. Only Benelin has it. Robitussin doesn't. Triaminic doesn't. Neither does any other cough medication. Only Benelin contains diphenhydramine. The exclusive cough suppressant introduced by doctors to over 30 million people. Benalin, same full strength available today without prescription to relieve your cough hour after hour. Benalin from Park Davis, helping your pharmacist and your doctor help your health. I'll be just a sec. Hey, fish are jumping, buddy. There's more for your life. Just ran in to get what I need, but then I bumped into Harris Tweed. There's more for your life at Sears. I heard sound from a laser disc. What a surprise. And Converse Pro Stars, just my size. I could spend hours here. <gasps> All the guys. There's more for your life. Where you been? Shopping. At Sears. Sunshine on my shoulders makes me happy. UNICEF helps millions of the world's children in their struggle for survival. Children who need food, medicine, and clean water. This is John Denver to remind you that Halloween is National UNICEF Day. Give a child a chance. Give a child a smile. Sunshine almost always makes me smile. When friends don't stop friends from drinking and driving. Friends die from drinking and driving. Friends die from drinking and... Drinking and driving can kill a friendship. We're going we're gonna to look at uh, a clip from your, your motion picture, The Razor's Edge. Now, this is a remake of a movie mm -hmm. that was originally made based on Somerset Maugham novel. Right. right. Now, uh, by the way, let me just explain. This is the last clip 
will ever show on this program, unless Harry Dean Stanton has one. Is Harry <laughs> okay, then you're, you have, this is the last one. It's been a change in policy. Paul, do you know Troubles? Troubles? Yesterday. <laughs> All my troubles seem so far away. <laughs> Sorry. 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 Help yourself. So do you want to uh, explain to the folks what they're going to see here? Uh, <clears throat> this is a scene... Uh, this is the hardest part of the business, introducing the clip. This, uh, I'm, in this I'm in this clip with uh, Teresa Russell, who is uh, uh, backstage right now. And uh, she's one of the most fantastic actresses I've ever worked with. And I'm not saying that just because she's here. Yes, you are. So. <laughs> but uh, you should really go see this movie just to see her, because she's, she's just uh, amazing in the film. And uh -huh. it's, uh, it's really... Uh, you know who else is in the... Well, of course you know who well, else. To, uh, Your brother's in the my film. My brother Brian is in yeah, the I, film. Yeah, you know, I enjoyed seeing you guys work together. Wasn't I thought it that, Yeah, I thought that was a real nice uh, it was. couple it was of a scenes. Treat. And he dies, yeah. which is really fantastic. We kill him all. <laughs> <laughs> we kill him... Well, no, he's still alive. It's a yeah, movie, Steve. It's a, it's a movie. <laughs> all right, so he uh, he dies in the movie, though, so yeah. he got to be drunk all the time because he was dying anyway. <laughs> uh, oh, that's, a, that's another good scene, but we can't... Uh, people yeah, okay. haven't seen it, they won't know what we're talking about. All right, let's oh, take a look at what we're going to see. Did you want so to tell is, them more uh, about this? Yeah, so this is... Uh, uh, I'm going off to war, and uh, this is... A... Here. I have this printed up for you. They're poems. Oh, this is great. Now I'll have something to read to the guys in the trenches at night. You used to like them. Well, they're good. I always liked the poet. I'm going to miss you. You know, when we were kids, I was always terrified you were the guy I was going to have to marry. But you just couldn't control yourself, could you? <laughs> oh, Bob. Oh, Bob, Bob, don't. Oh, Bob, don't. Stop. Whatever you do, Bob, don't. Oh, Bob. <laughs> well, there's, uh, I probably should have told you that that's not the girl that I'm, that she's married to somebody else, and, uh, She's already pregnant. She sort of got married hastily, and she was pregnant. So mm -hmm. when I said you just couldn't control yourself, it was a joke. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> now I, I noticed you uh, you get a, a screen uh, play credit on this. You and another man wrote the screenplay. Mm -hmm. Now was there? Uh, how did that uh, work? What do you, how do you when you go into? How did you guys sit down and write a screenplay from this? Well, um, from the existing movie or from the existing novel? Mm, no, we uh, we just took the story of the novel. We made it our own way. So it's a lot. It's a lot lighter than the original. Yeah. We wanted to make it a little more. Now, do you go to an office somewhere? Yeah. Do you go to your house? Do you go? No, we wrote in bars mostly. Um, <laughs> we would go to bars. <laughs>